I think when we did that, you know, recorded that song, it felt like we got the band back. It felt like, okay, this is this is my chemical romance. Look alive, sunshine. 109 in the sky, but the pigs won't quit. You're here with me, Dr. Death Defying. I'll be your surgeon, your proctor, your helicopter, bumping out the slaughtermatic sounds to keep you live. A system failure for the masses, antimatter for the master plan. Louder than God's revolver and twice as shiny. This one's for all you rock and rollers, all you crash queens and motor babies. We thought what we thought we knew what record we wanted to write. And I just think that's like a very dangerous thing to, to go into the studio saying. Um, you know, you kind of have to let the music find you. And, um, you know, I think we were going in with a mindset of this is what we're doing, this is how we're going to do it, these are the songs, this is what the songs are going to sound like, these are the limits that we're going to put ourselves, you know, put on ourselves in the studio. Um, you know, a lot of rules were set up. And, I, you know, I think after. <coughs> you know, after like probably eight months of writing and recording, we heard what we had done and we weren't completely happy with it. You know, we, we thought, well, we knew that we could do better. And, um, you know, we got the chance to work with Rob Cavallo and, and we rec wrote and recorded Na Na Na, which, which was the first single off the record and the first track on the record. And, um, you know, once we did that song, we realized like we had to start over again. What's cool about the song is it's based, it's, it's kind of based actually in some of the stuff we were trying with the previous material that we were writing. You know, kind of being more punk and, you know, and kind of just more straight ahead. But at the same time, there's a lot of room for experimentation in that song. You know, like the bridge um, of the song kind of gets, you know, it's really out there. And then it kind of all comes back, back to this chorus. And, um, you know, those are some of the things that we're really good at and we weren't doing on the previous stuff. The, the previous stuff was a little, was was a little bit samey, you know, every, every and a little boring, and um, you know that song was just really exciting. It was just a catalyst of of, of a lot of inspiration. You know, Gerard had had kind of the riff and the chorus, you know, na 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 na. He had that in his head for for a good while, and I remember him saying that he kind of he had he kept it in his back pocket because, you know, I don't. I think he was music's weird, you know. If there's not the right energy in the room, at the, you know, if you try to write a song, sometimes it won't work depending on the energy in the room, and usually when that happens, it's gone forever. And, you know, I think he felt there was something special about the song, but didn't want to, you know, you know, try it out until we, we were in the right headspace for it. And right here, right now, all the way in Battery City, the little children raise their open filthy palms like tiny daggers up to heaven. True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys, that actually existed about a year and a half ago. And it was something that we kind of flirted with. Um, we were talking about like maybe involving some of the elements. This was a comic book that Gerard and, and a friend of ours, Sean Simon, were working on together. And we had talked about, you know, kind of working in some of the elements into the record. But I, I think our mindset, we just weren't ready for it. And you know, after Na Na Na, especially you know with the lyrics and everything, it really kind of it was really honing in to the ideas that Gerard and Sean were, were trying to, to put forth in the, co in the comic that they were working on. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool that the way it works is the record almost is like a companion piece or an extension of some of the ideas that you, you know, people will end up reading maybe next, maybe ne ho hopefully this year, well not this year probably, but maybe next year in the actual comic book. Mm -hmm. So. They're kind of, it's, it's interesting, like the comic book inspired the music, which inspires the comic book, and it's, it's all part of this really big world. 